are coming out of this place at three o'clock. I must make sure somebody falls from the roof. Uh-huh. <laughs> then there will be a resurrection miracle. But it's been wonderful. I really enjoy. These are the days where I feel like the same way, like taking the seven different directions. But you may have your seats in the, in the presence of God. It is wonderful. It is wonderful. I think uh, Pastor Martin said there will be uh, for the Mother's Day. The screen is not work- working. Even my, my presentation is not going, is not going to work. Huh? It will not work. Are you? Screen is not I had a presentation on the on the screen but I'm going to I'm going to survive I'm going to survive. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Christine is asking telling me like an Indian uh, it's okay one as we know see one as we son it is Mother's Day today it is Mother's Day today. I had two friends of mine. I had two friends of mine who, in the course of this month, they lost their combined last month. It was just last in the course of last month. I had two friends of mine who lost their wives. And uh, <coughs> and uh, sort of woke me up. It's, it woke me up in the sense that uh, the creation of the woman was the idea of God. And I think I mentioned this in the Bible study. That the creation of the woman was the idea of God. And being the idea of God, God has never given up on the woman. Though sometimes the woman is relegated in the Times we are new. These are just women. Ani wakawake tu. These are ani wamama. Then when we describe a man, sometimes uyu ana umama and things like that. So it's very derogative in a sense. But the creation of the woman was the idea of God. So you cannot say that uh, it was a mistake that God made a mistake of the creation of the woman God comes into a culture that has no regard to what we call the woman and Jesus comes into that culture and invades that culture to show them that he has come to restore the position of the woman because the woman is the idea of God. One of the prayers of a Jew, one of the, the prayers of a Jew is this, that you, when, they, when the men come to the temple of God, when they come to do their prayers, one of the things, some of the things that they thank God for is that one, one of the things they thank God for is that, Lord, I thank you I am not a dog, I'm not a slave, I'm not a dog, I'm not a slave, I'm not a Gentile, and, I'm, and you never created me a woman. That is the prayer of a Jew. Even up to now, I believe even up to now, they still pray those kind of prayers. But the woman is the idea of God. I saw my friends get so devastated because the woman is an institution. When you marry your wife, he, she is an institution. I saw them crumble. I saw them so confused. One of the guys was telling me, I wake up sometimes, I don't even know where to start. I don't know. Because the woman in your house is an institution. And sometimes the way you address her 
you still address her not with the revelation that God has given you. The revelation of God, you have now to stop looking at her from a natural standpoint and begin to look at her spiritually. I used to have a lot of squabbles with my wife when we began. But later on, now she's not, she's not naturally revealed to me. She is spiritually revealed to me because now she has come into my life. Now I look at her. When I look at her, I look at her with some revelation. It was so bad in the sense that when God came to that particular culture, to invade that particular culture, he made sure that during his resurrection, it is the women who are the first ones to witness that resurrection. The woman was not supposed to be recognized. The witness, she could not stand in a court of law. That's how we relegated them to the back door. In fact, when your Bible, your Bible, the Bible that you read is so prejudiced, then we look at it. When Jesus is performing a miracle, the one who writes says that there were 5,000 men besides women and children. That is the culture that he was invading. And the Bible talks about uh, that, that there were certain women that followed Jesus, that ministered to him. They're the women who could reach out and touch the hem when men kept surrounding him. It is the women who broke priceless things to pour it on Jesus. So the women in our lives are institutions. And the way we look at them tells you that you have the mind of Christ, that you have the mind of God. Because these women have to be spiritually revealed, and the way you relate with them, you relate with them because they're spiritually revealed. I know sometimes I'm Patanagi. But it is, if you want to be a high value woman or if you want to be a high value man, a high value man is somebody who knows that the wife, the wife who comes to his life is an institution. I saw my two friends just crumble. They were burying their wives. But let me tell you, don't take it very simple. Appreciate them. Do good things to them. Reciprocate in kindness. And the Lord who is going to bless you. I just felt I should mention that. And as I mentioned that, you realize during Sodom and Gomorrah, even Lord, can you imagine Lord, the angels who came to save him and they wanted to come and sleep with this man. What is the attitude of Lord towards his daughters? The Bible says that in the last days they will be giving each other in marriage. They will be releasing their daughters in marriage and people will be giving each other in marriage. Look at his attitude. He tells them, I have two daughters. I can release them to you. That is the attitude. And that is the attitude we have in our generation now. We are releasing our daughters just the way. We're just releasing them. Just releasing them. So the woman has her place. And a woman is an institution. And to be a high value woman, the Bible, the Bible in the book of Proverbs, this is 31, the book of Proverbs, the Bible says that the law of kindness in his, is in her lips. There's a way women communicate with men. Sometimes the, the idea that I have, to win, I have to win an argument, the idea that I have to, when you communicate with a man, sometimes when you're arguing, you have to, you have to make him feel guilty 
You have to make him feel, bring a sense of shame to him. And, uh, and uh, the idea that I have to win that argument, you have this sense that you have to be right. Those are some of the things high value women don't do. They understand the authority, they understand how to work. You have to know how to communicate. But all with that, the attitude of the man has to be that women are the idea of God. Buenas uh, Visan. It's been a long while since I since I stood here to really preach. And one of the things I learned about leadership, did you enjoy the ministry of Brother Robert? Christine, thank you so much for the way you brought in the word. Thank you for the opportunity. Pastor Martin and the rest of King Frank. My responsibility as a leader is to create a safe environment and I have to learn to be so humble I have to be, learn to be very humble because humility humility when you have humility as a leader it means you are taking a position where you can learn from somebody else is that clear? I can learn from you can learn from me but also I can learn from you and uh, when we started the church, I was talking to the pastors. We were having a meeting with the pastors. And, uh, and I was trying to tell them that uh, for the first, first three years or so, what I've been trying to do is lay a very strong foundation in the sense of having a strong church that is built on the word. People that are strong in the word. That has been my greatest driving force. Then ap apart from that, what we have been doing, we've been endeavoring to do, is to create a culture. The moment we have formed a culture, and I noticed that the culture has already been formed because when you come into this environment, one of the things you're going to feel is safe. And then the other thing you're going to feel is you're going to be loved. You're going to feel the love of the brethren because you, we will know them. We will know them by their fruits and we'll know that they will not because of the love they have one for the other. You understand? So the leader must create that safe environment where people are able to flourish. And one of the things I pushed as a nettles in my, in my ministry is to push that when you stand behind this pulpit, what you do is constantly speak life. Constantly speak life. Because the whole week people have been battling neg neg a lot of negativity. And from this pulpit, what you do is to speak life so that people can begin to, the children of God can begin to vibrate at a higher frequency. You begin to vibrate at a higher frequency. Because when you begin to vibrate at a high frequency, when you dev when, what we do is make you develop the fruit of the Spirit. And when you develop the fruit of the Spirit, what automatically comes into your life is that you begin to operate on a higher level on higher dimension higher dimension and when you begin to operate in higher dimension you are in a place where you can hear the word of God and that word of God begins to transform your life and people just want to be around you I have a buddy of mine from uh, in the, in, in the in outside Nairobi who when he's going through problems, he tells me, I spare one hour, I need us to talk. Just talk a lot of nothing, but just talk. And, uh, and the moment we talk, and he confessed to me the other day, he just told me, when I talk to you, there's something that comes to me, even if I'm overwhelmed with a lot of things, there's something that comes on me. Are there no people in your life that when you just, when you just meet them, your baby moves from within? Yeah, I'm scared. The baby moves, you know, like uh, there's a move of the baby within. Uh -huh. And there are people you look at when you're about to meet them, you see them in town, you decide that you are busy with the phone and uh, when we wake up a scene, you take a position 
and then you know like you never saw them because you don't want that the level of negativity these people carry it's just enormous there are people who call me sometimes i don't even want to pick up the phone i pick every phone but there are people i know there are two people who call me and i don't want to pick up the phone i normally tell them when it's early enough i tell them i'll call them later and surely i call them when i've done when i've dealt with a lot of things during the day i can call them in the evening i know i have the luxury of time even psychologists some of the psychologists they know their patients you know who you i'm going to put them the late ones any sele ni misha maliza nguvu yote nimechoka sasa sikuna watu wanaweza sikia there are people you can listen to you get tired they wear you down they wear you down completely this year this year's theme is uh 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 uh, the theme of this year is uh, be strong and very courageous be strong and very courageous one of the things that i drive is to push you into leadership if you notice that i push you into leadership leadership takes courage the, uh, and as i say the role of a leader is to create a safe environment environment for everyone to feel safe a leader must be courageous in the sense of laying one's life down for the community you cannot lead a company you can only lead a people you can only lead a people the people who lead the people who lead companies they're just leading companies but they're not leading a people you need to lead a people there are leaders and there are authorities we pay respect to leaders and not authorities there are people who have been placed in authorities but there are people those are people that we can never emulate but we give respect to leaders who are not just authorities i have come to the understanding that okay we are social animals we are social animals and we need each other those are some some of my notes and uh for the people who have been following the 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 bible study you notice that uh what we've been studying we've really studied a lot of things and some of the things some of the highlights i want to and uh, it's it's unfortunate that uh the screen cannot work but uh we will we will survive i want us to read ephesians chapter chapter 1 Maybe Pastor Robert, you can have the microphone because it's my my timing. I my message would have been so nice with uh, I had a presentation to do that would have come out so well to sort of sort of explain what I'm trying to do. From verse one up to I'll tell you where to stop. But uh, you can read my my version. My version is is what I'm. It's a passion translation. All right. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 1. It says, My name is Paul, and I was chosen by God to be an apostle of Jesus, the Messiah. I am writing this letter to all the devoted believers who have been made holy by being one with Jesus, the Anointed One. May God himself, the Heavenly Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, release grace over you and impart total well-being into your lives. Verse 3. Every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm has already been lavished upon us as a love gift from our wonderful heavenly Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, all because he sees us wrapped into Christ. This is why we celebrate him with all our hearts. Verse 4. And he chose us to be his very own would be seen as holy in his eyes with an unstained innocence verse 5 and 6 for it is for it was always in his perfect plan to adopt us as his delightful children through our union with Jesus the anointed one so that his tremendous love that cascades over us would glorify his grace for the same love he has 
for his beloved one Jesus he has for us the same love that he has for Jesus he has for us mm -hmm. and this unfolding plan brings him great pleasure verse 7 since we are now joined to Christ we have been given the treasures of redemption by his blood the total cancellation of our sins all because the of the total cancellation of our sins, sins. All because of the cascading riches of His grace. This super abundant grace is always is already powerful, working in us, releasing within us all forms of wisdom and practical understanding. And through the revelation of the Anointed One, He unveiled His secret desire to us, the hidden mystery of His long-range plan, which He was delighted to implement from the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. And because of God's unfailing purpose, mm -hmm. this detailed plan will reign supreme through every period of time uh -huh. until the fulfillment of all the ages finally uh -huh. reaches its climax. When God makes all things new uh -huh. in all of heaven and earth through Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. Verse 11. And go ahead. Uh -huh. Through our union with Christ, uh -huh. we too have been claimed by God as his own inheritance. Mm -hmm. Before we were even born, he gave us our destiny. Uh -huh. Amen. That we would fulfill the plan of God uh -huh. who always accomplishes every purpose and plan in his heart. Verse 12. God's purpose was that we Jews who were the first to long for the messianic hope would be the first to believe in the anointed one and bring great praise and glory to God. In verse 13, and because of him, when you who are not Jews heard the revelation of truth, you believed in the wonderful news of salvation. Now we have been stamped with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Verse 14, he is given to us like an engagement ring, uh -huh. is given to a bride. Uh -huh. As the first installment of what's coming, uh -huh. he is our hope. He is our hope promise for our future inheritance, which seals us until we have all the redemption, redemption's promises, and experience complete freedom, all for the supreme glory and honor of God. Amen. 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 That is uh, that is part of what we've been doing as a church. The Bible study that we've been taking on as a church. And what I wanted to present today was uh, a concept called perichoresis. Perichoresis. I don't know whether I get the correct word, but it is P-E-R-I-C-H-O-R-E-S-I-S. I'll repeat it again. Perichoresis. What is the meaning of perichoresis? Perichoresis is a Greek word used to describe the binding of the Trinity, the two natures of Jesus Christ and God's omnipresence. Nothing can divide the three members of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. People sometimes struggle to understand the combined Godhead and identity, and rightly so, as, as it is a mystery. However, the word perichoresis can help us understand the word itself comes from the Greek word, the Greek, which is peri, which mean, meaning round. And I had my presentation here, and the TV is really letting us down. It should have come out so well, but I'll try. And Korean meaning to give away. I began by, by demonstrating and, and giving examples of the man and the woman, the, woman, the man and the woman in a relationship, or any relationship that God brings. Perichoresis could, could be translated as a rotation or going around. Some scholars picture this as a sort of a choreographed dance. All members of the dance move as one, precisely, fluidly, to create a meaningful, meaningful working together. Okay, I'll just, I'll just go right ahead and maybe finalize. Huh? And finally, perichoresis can refer to how God in his omnipresence intersects with all creation in Colossians Paul writes about this when he describes Jesus for by him all things were created in heaven and on earth visible and invisible whether thrones or dominions 
or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. So that is pericoresis. It is a dance. And what God has been working on from chapter 1 of the book of Ephesians, God has been working on to get us into the particular dance, to be enjoined in this. I call ourselves to be the fourth trinity. When you read, when you read John chapter 17, you'll see the idea and the intent of God that what God desires at the end game, the end game is that we could show ourselves and get into the particular dance. To enjoy, to be enjoined in that dance. Now I call ourselves the fourth trinity. Because Jesus is praying. He's praying to the Father. There's coming a time when it shall be you in me, me in you, them in us, and then it translates into what you call it's a choreographed dance. And that is what God is looking for. He wants that dance. And he wants that unity. Because God is relationship. God does not know anything apart from relationship. In fact, when God was creating, he says that let us. Because when he's doing that, he does not do it on himself. He, do his, he does all these things incorporating people. Uh, on, the, on, the, on, on the night of uh, Tuesday, coming to Wednesday, I was caught up. I get this sometimes, these experiences. I got caught up. And in my getting caught up, it is, it, it's in my dreams. I'm about to wake up and I'm caught up. And I'm seeing myself walking in the streets of Lagos with this particular preacher. I don't listen to him, but once in a while I listen to him. But I'm walking with him. I'm having conversation and we had a long conversation. Long, long conversation. And one of the one of the parting shots, and I could see us jumping, uh, you know, like we are jumping and we're walking, and he's explaining, and we're talking scriptures. And me, I'm, me, I'm throwing my scriptures. He's throwing back at script. You know, you can be caught up. That's my experience. So one of the statements he left me with: It is not the people in the space, but it's the man in the space that makes the difference I never heard anybody say like that but God began to talk to me when I was asking him well, how do I share the message this Sunday there is a realm within us that has to be accessed and God being the example of relationship God being the example of relationship he wants us to be in relationship because it's in relationship that God reveals himself. But also, God will never do anything on the earth without having a relationship with man and with the community of people like us. So it's the man who comes. So when you come into a space like this, you're not coming to get a blessing. When you come to this environment, you carry the blessing. You are the career of God. You have access to the particular God. You have access to God. So when you're, coming to, when you're coming to a space like this, you're not coming here so that you can look for a blessing. No. I'm looking for the man of God to bless me. No. When you come into this space, you're coming because you know you, you are a career of God. God, you are the tabernacle of God. God resides in you. Because the way the children of Israel related with God was from outside. But God wanted to relate with the children of God from within. So the New Testament is the power is from within to affect the things outside. The screen is on. Beautiful. Now you can give me the the dance. Bonus view. It is so beautiful. Accuser is the one who comes to divide. To, accuser is the one who, 
who categorize us away from integration, harmony, holiness, and separation. So anytime you're having a relationship, there must be an there will be an accuser coming into the garden to accuse you. And uh, when you're rela- when you're having a relationship, I was teaching in the Bible study. The purpose of having a relationship is not I'm not relating with my wife because I have a need. It is not based on need. God did not need you like he had a need, but he wanted you. God wants you. If you're walking in love, you're not in need. If I need are institutions behind you. These are institutions behind you. So for God to do great things in our in our midst, it takes us people coming in togetherness and we begin to to be in harmony. I told you one of the purposes of a leader is is to create a self a, a safe environment. That is the purpose of a leader. To be in a place where you can be yourself and nobody will stay, is going to judge you or accuse you. Because that is what we have we've been forming as a culture here. We don't want you when you step out of this place we are backbiting and talking about you and dividing you because accusation is what brings division and the accusation must come an accuser must be in our midst to divide us constantly but you have to live above the voice of an accuser you have to live above the voice of an accuser the reason God seeks to enjoin you in that dance he knows that there is a dimension in you that is of the same essence as he is. The Bible says in John, 1 John 4, 16, 17, and 18, as he is, so are we on the earth. So God knows that his essence is not outside of you. His essence is already within you. His essence is already, there is a dimension in you that you need to access. The dimension in you that God wants. So the new birth is an awakening to a dimension that has always been within you. Because there's a part of you that was created and there's a part of you that came from God. There's a part of you that is uncreated and that is what responds to the voice of God. That is what responds to the voice of God. There's a dimension within you. The concept of sin. In Genesis, we come to Genesis. God is coming in the cool of the day to meet with man, the one he had created, so that he can have a relationship with him. But the Bible says when he came to man, the Bible says say that man, man responded and said, I am afraid. I heard your voice and I was afraid. That is what has been happening to man all over the history. From Genesis up to Revelation, men do not want to hear the voice of God. Men are running away from the voice of God. I was afraid when I heard your voice coming in the cool of the day. The children, first of all, the children of Israel, God comes with the marriage language. He wants to begin to talk to them and woo them so that they can come into fellowship with him. 19th chapter of the book of Exodus. A very sad chapter of the book in the Bible. God comes down and he wants to have a relationship with them. But they say no. Those words are too hard. And, and, and by the way, it's like Pastor Robert knew I'm going to use those words today. Chapter 12 of the book of, 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 the book of Hebrews. They could not bear the words of God. They told Moses, you go and talk to that God. As for us, we do not want to relate with him. Anytime you are so full 
wanted to have wanted to have a prophet listen for you on on your behalf and you carry money so that a prophet can listen on your behalf that is not the intention of god when we have christians who need a mediator for them to walk with god one of the greatest emphasis that i put here is that i need you to discover god for yourself to have a personal relationship with god to begin to walk with god in a sense and to understand that you can access that dimension that dimension of god is already available it and it's already within you that dimension is available so they refused to hear the voice of god and they told moses you go to god and speak whatever he tells you we are able to do so there's no intentionality and you depend on mediators to give you that relationship what god wants is a dance and there's some things there's a dimension he wants you that is accessible to you and he wants you to walk in that dimension that reality of that dimension fast forward chapter 8 of the book of john talks about a woman caught in the very act of adultery they bring him to jesus and they tell him the law says this woman ought to be stoned to death to death but what do you say what was the conclusion of jesus when he looks at that woman because he comes to a society that does not respect the woman they have no mercy the law has no mercy for this woman and he seeks to tell him this is what the law says they forget he's the one who gave it it was not the intention of god to give you commandments outside it was the intention of god to give you commandments within so that life coming up from within can control things that are without that is the intention of god and that is the covenant that we have already cut with with christ so he tells the woman where are your accusers where are your accusers where are your accusers god himself declares he declares on himself he says i have no power to divide you and put you in categories what is sin the concept of sin what is sin sin is rebelling against your own position the definition of sin is rebelling against your own position sin is when you're hearing two voices and you accept one voice sin is rebelling against your own position i like you to to do uh Hebrews chapter 3:14 from 14:1 Sin is rebelling against your position. There's a voice from God and there's a voice of the accuser. I was afraid when I had your voice and I was afraid. So when I'm afraid I get into a dimension. When I'm in faith I get into a dimension. So sin is when another voice supersedes the voice of God in your life. We tend to think because if you read the scriptures there's no place where Jesus is calling other people sin, sinners. It is us religious people who call other people these sinners, the people who go to the clubs. The people who go to do the people who are gambling and all and doing prostitution and all the kind of manner of thing those are the people he calls sinners but Christ never called them anybody sinner never i like you to i like you to look at a scripture in, in the bible where god called where jesus calls anybody a sinner neither do i accuse you 
I am in the position of God, but I can never accuse you. As brethren in a community like this, never take the position. Never take the position of the accuser and begin to accuse you, brother. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said, today if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. Because sin is rebellion. It's rebelling against your own position. 13th chapter of the book of Numbers. The 12 spies. They come back with very good reports. All the land is beautiful. Everything is fine. The fruits, the everything. We even carry the evidence of that, of that particular land. We carry the evidence. This is the evidence. This is the fruit of that particular land. But they caused the children of Israel to fear because of a bad report. They say, this is when we understand the voice of God in our lives. We are, right, we are, we are studying the book of Ephesians that we no longer are, are going to be children tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, by the slight and the cunningness of men. Because let me tell you, a lot of things behind, are happening behind this pulpit. Manipulation. People taking your position. Witchcraft behind this pulpit. Because they know they make merchandise. This is a place to make merchandise. But people need to come to a place of relationship where they become mature in the things of God. Are you understanding me? So that is our responsibility. That is our responsibility. I was watching the news, uh, I was watching YouTube the other day and I could see a pastor forcing his congregation to eat grass. To eat grass and you can see them eating grass. There's some, he's trying to tell them, how do you tell a whole congregation? How do you leave your brain from, uh, when you enter this place, how do you leave your brain at the, at the entrance and get into the, and get into the sanctuary of God and lose your sense lose your sense to accept everything the pastor is, is trying to tell you. Be noble as the, as, the, as the believers in Thessalonica who went to check to see the scripture, to see whether Paul was saying the things that are correct. We need to be searchers of scriptures. I am calm that they might have life and have it more abundantly. But he says that my sheep hear my voice and the voice of the stranger, they are not. So God is not with you when you are having your private sessions with your private, uh, private uh, apostles and prophets. God is not with you because it is your, now your responsibility to understand the face of God, to, and to be in the face of God, to understand, to be somebody who understands spiritual things. Don't be caught up by mysticisms. Because there are some certain adventures that God will begin to work with. I do not relate with this woman because of need. I don't relate with her based on need. If I need my wife, I do not truly know. Ephesians, we've been learning about Ephesians, that it's it's in the book of Ephesians that the husbands are commanded to love their wives. It's a, sort of a dance. It's a submitting one to another. Because it's when we are relating that's when God begins to do great things in our lives. So sin is rebellion against your own position. Your already position. So Christ came. Christ has come. Did he do a perfect work? He did a perfect work. Did he die on the cross? Yes, he died on the cross. What did John talk about Jesus? He says that this is the one who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one that takes away the rebellion in the hearts of men. This is the one that takes... So, when you're discussing about sin, God does not know what you're discussing about. Because he has solved the problem of sin. He has taken sin... The Bible says 
that he has made he made him sin who knew no sin that we can become the righteousness of God so i am the righteousness of God so i do not go to go to discuss about sin i don't i don't because sin let me tell you sin is a big business in these countries and in the world sin is a big is a big business sin is a big big business because every sunday you're going to have customers every sunday you're going to have customers people who are coming to ask God for forgiveness we read from ephesians that he's the one who is able to keep us blameless holy and blameless in his sight there's no way you can takasa yourself there's no way you can wash yourself ah there's no way the work of the it is the washing the washing when you speak good words to her speaking good words to her the washing i told you just like the mystery of the church and god is the mystery this god is paul is trying to explain the mystery of husband and wife but he's talking about the mystery of the relationship that he has him and the church so he's the lamb that takes away the rebellion the sin of the world my sheep hear my voice and the voice of the stranger they can never find no god for yourself no scriptures for yourself but let me tell you i have dealt with people so confused i'm telling you it, it breaks my heart it breaks my heart and that's why i began by saying for the first 3 years what we did is put up a foundation where we direct people towards the word of god because let me tell you truth be told i was talking to Evans in the morning was telling there will be times when we used to be excited the man of god has come in you know i come into a space like this and i i'm calling people you know i'm laying hands poo you know you, you know i call them and you know you're dying you, you know i lay my hands you you down and you know i was telling him that uh, i used to have catchers and one of the guys uh, we we were dropping water for him with uh, with uh, frank I said in front this was one of my catchers when I'm, we would go for missions this one undo lale kwa kishikilia watu kianguka na kushikilia na kachini because when you fall down you still come out the same yeah you tell me what happened when i laid my hands on you you fell down when you rose up was there any change in you was there any transformation in you because transformation is intentional You've got to go out there and begin to have a relation a genuine relationship with God. But let me tell you as long as you're a baby in the things of the, in the things of God let me tell you. Ah. I've seen people who run from this meeting prophet so and so I mean this prophet so and so and this prophet so and so and they are everywhere. If you if you see the people who are coming with 10 20000 they're the ones very 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 proud the lot of money i've cancelled a woman who has sold her whole house and she's in poverty right now an inheritance giving out an inheritance because she wants a blessing from god you are already blessed you already have a dimension within you that accesses god there's an essence within you that has god Why are you looking for it outside there? Because even even when God was giving them rituals that was not his will. When he was telling them to come with uh, with offerings that was not the will of God. That was a secondary thing. And they were to meet God only once a year and you had to use a priest with a uniform to access God once a year. And this dispensation God wants to access you God wants you to access him and you cannot and he wants to access you because God does not need you he wants you and when you're truly in a relationship with God you have no need Jesus made it very clear in Matthew 6:33 the priority of the kingdom of God 
Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things shall be added unto you. Do not be like the pagans because the pagans come to seek a blessing. And what we have in our churches today are pag- it's a paganistic kind of churches. Do this. They are doing business with God. I give so that I can receive. I give. And it's business as usual. It's business. It's not relationship. It's not relationship. This is a hard place to be. In this community, it's a hard place to be because it will take you responsibility to be a person that digs deep into the word of God. And I'm committed to it. I have been in those nonsense. I've been in those nonsense. Of, okay, it's just part of growth. But after doing it for years, I came to realize I have no transformation. I have no people. I have no people who can stand on their own two feet. People who realize that they are the maturity of God. They are the, the mature sons of God. Because God is light. It is very common. People do not want to hear God. People want other people to hear God for themselves, for, for the, on their behalf. Same thing. They want to be like the people in the world. You don't want, you abdicate your responsibility. Let me tell you, you get into poverty. There's a way, there's a, an, idea, an idiosyncratic way God wants to reveal himself personally to you. He wants to have that relationship with you. The enemy accuses. The enemy's work is to divide, to create this harmony amongst husband and wife, among church members, amongst leaders, and stuff like that. He comes to divide. He comes to categorize. Rise above. Rise above this pity, the pettiness. Rise above. The power of religion. The power of religion. There's nothing so powerful on the earth like the power of religion. Jesus never had any problem with the tax collectors and the prostitutes. He never had any problem. But the people he had a problem with was the organized institutions that came after him day in, day out. They argued with him. They confronted him daily. They planned to kill him. They are the ones who even took him to court. They are the ones who took him to, to Pilate to listen to his case. They are the ones who released Barabbas. They are the ones who came to pick him from where he was. They had an organized, this was an organized system because sin the idea of sin is a big business. It's a big business. It's a big business. And the Bible says, He has come to take the sin of the world from you. So when you're discussing about sin and repentance and all the old matter of things, he doesn't know, he doesn't understand what you're talking about. Because when Jesus died, he did a perfect job. He died as you. He was buried as you. When he rose up, he rose up as you. So you are when you're risen up, you've risen up as him. As he is, so are we in the world. So you have to walk in that consciousness. You have to walk in that consciousness. But repentance is a movement, and repentance is not as uh, repentance. Repentance is not a, re- a religious term. Repentance is a psychological term. Because what God is trying to say is come back to your senses. I'll take you back to the two sons, the parable of the two, of the two sons. The parable of the two sons is this. All of them were in the wrong because they couldn't wait for the father to die. They were in close, doesn't mean that you, when you're in close proximity that you have a relationship with your father. 
But he took the son who went away to come to his senses. The Bible says he came to his senses. And the Bible says that when he went to the father's presence, he said, the father said that this son of mine was dead, but now he's alive. He was dead. He was dead. So God promises, Jesus promises, chapter 6, there's coming a time when the dead shall hear the voice of God and they shall rise from their graves. Let me tell you, it's coming a time when that revelation of God is going to hit your spirit. And you're going to realize that you have that dimension, that you have that essence of God already within you to access God. You have that part of you that is uncreated, that God gave you. There will be a light coming into your, into your heart and you come to resonate with that light. That you're truly the son of God. Because what God needs to do, what you need to do when you're walking with God, you just need to confess. And confession means that I agree with everything that God says. Homologio. I begin to accept. God says that I'm the righteousness of God. You accept that I'm the righteousness of God. That I'm forgiven. Your sins have been taken care of. Your past, present, and future. What does it mean? God does not know, does not think like the way you think. God does not have a past, does not have a present, and does not have a future. future. I'll prove it to you. Moses is in the bush. The bush is burning, but he has no time to burn. Because eternity has come. It is standstill. It is us who move. It is us who age. But God's eternity remains the same. Moses, when he began to interact with God, could go back to Genesis. And he's still with the children of Israel. He could go back to Genesis and write all the book of Genesis without ever being there. You understand? And he goes into the future because he meets with Christ at the Mount of Transfiguration. There is no... Everything collapses with God. It is us who relate with God based on our mindset. God has already done it. So when you talk to him about rebellion and sin and stuff like that, he does not know what you're talking about. All that he is is that you have accessed his nature. So everything collapses with God. It is past, present and future. There's nothing like because when he talks about when he talks about the lamb that's slain from the foundation of the earth, he talks about something that had already happened. To him, it already happened. So when you're relating with God based on chronos, you're losing it. You're, you're losing it. He does not go with your time. Everything to him is eternity. 17th chapter of the book of John talks about it, this is eternal life that they may know the Father. And what God gives you is eternal life. The Zoe of God. The life of God. That is the dimension that you live in. That is the reality that God wants you to look at. So in essence, when God says that he has given you eternity within your heart, it means everything collapses. You have no time. You have no past. You have no present. You have no future. Everything is done. You have eternal life. When I'm meeting you, I know you're my brother. You're already experiencing eternal life. And you have that life within you. And that life of God is already within you. And you walk in that reality. Because now when you confess, when you're confessing, the meaning of confession is that I agree with, I acknowledge and agree with everything God says. He has done it. He has done it. There's no rebellion within you. So you have to walk in that reality. When your two voices are conflicting, when you when that voice of the the, the other voice that is the other voice is and let me tell you, there are people in the world accessing that voice. And they're not religious. And they're stepping into that voice. And they're looking at things and saying, this can be done. This is possible. This is not. And they are doing phenomenal things. It is us Christians who are waiting for God to to say, you have have the life of God within you. And you have it. 
So God is inviting you to a dance. That dance has the details, but it is such a spectacular dance. You're the fourth trinity, and God wants you to be in that particular dance. God will never do anything without, first of all, having a relationship with you. And what God, what, what the enemy fights and the seat in the garden is an accuser coming in to divide you, to separate you. Because in essence, you've never been separated from God. You've always been. You've always come from God. And until that sense, when you come to your senses, in your pig pen, when the senses come to you, come to the realization that I'm the son of God. How many of my, how many of my father's servants, they don't sleep with him. And I'm here languishing with the people. I will arise. And the arising comes in your mind. You begin to repent and come back to the thoughts, the lofty thoughts that God has to work right towards you. It is when we change the way we think. Because you can form your own religion. You can form your own religion and say, hey, last man in Jitakasa because Mungo is in his key. It's a dimension. And that dimension is already within you. God was operating with them, having a law outside. And people will go to that law. Do you notice that even when, even after God crafting the, the, the laws, he had to hide it inside a cabinet so that you don't look at it because that was not his will the bible says that it was covered up the top the top part is called the mercy seat because before you reach to the law there is mercy that you have you have to go through mercy but people love law that's why people love shaming one another people people just shaming we are living in a culture where people just want to shame people it's a big business to shame people. We see it on, uh, in our social media. We are, we are so glad when we shame people. Shame when you uncover people. It's a big business. But God is a covering. God is a covering. It's a big business. The sin of covering sin. It's a, it's, it's a big business. Religious, the, the religious system institutions are surviving on that trying to tell with the regalias. People are you. People like what you have to do to sana. Hey, people rely on people rely on those people they, with a long stick, with a with a hook. Yeah? And with long regalias and flowing. And when they come into a sanctuary like this, ah, oh, you feel so close to God. Oh God. Even when you greet the man, oh, you really bow down. Because God has to give you. There's a time I was teaching about rituals. I was teaching about rituals and creation. That to be, you have to be, you have to be in ritual to guide you into relationship, into creation. I'll, I'll give an example. I was, teaching, uh, I was teaching the Bible study guys and I was trying to tell them that uh, when your lungs collapse what they do is they take you through a ritual they give you something external they put you on what you call high dependence some machinery and something outside from outside is the one which sustains you you see I'm having, I'm talking with you right now. And uh, let's say, for example, it's about lunchtime right now. It's, a, it's about lunchtime. And very soon we'll be, don't be in a hurry to go because there's, there's some, some cakes. And, and you know, you'll be taking your cake and taking your tea. And, you know, the trek here and the air, the air does not confuse you. You know, you, you're swallowing, you're talking, you're laughing, and nothing is getting confused. Because you are in what you call a creation mode. You're in a creation mode. But when your lungs collapses, you have to go through what you call a ritual. Some, somebody has to put you on some dependency until the time you come back to creation. There's a way that God intended you to operate for. 
God intended you to operate from creation and not from ritual. So after six months, after three, four months of dependence to this oxygen, there are people right now, if you, there's somebody who was doing a calculation that you need about three million shillings to breathe the air of God every month. In a year, three million times 12, 36 million. You need 36 million to be out of the ritual. So you pay a lot when you depend on ritual. But when you're in creation mode, everything is automatic. And that, was, that is the intention of God. He wants to get you out of ritual to get you into a relationship. Is it making sense? You will eat your food. Everything is working fine. Everything is working fine. Until a muscle mixes up with, is it air or, and then you choke. <laughs> you know, you, have to, you go on a choke and somebody has to really hit you to go back to creation because it's something that has happened. I have friends of mine who have survived the COVID and for some time they were they were depending on something external to feed their lungs but after some time they came out successfully some could not make it but another a number of people quite a number of people made it they are back to what we call creation mode there's a way God created you to respond to him. Am I making sense? There's a way God created you to automatically respond to him without using rituals to get to him. But the children of Israel desired rituals than relationship. You understand? Because I cannot come up when the way I the way we love each other with my wife, it's not that uh, it's ritualistic. It's not ritual. Now I come home with a cassette. I don't talk to anybody. I sit down. You know, you know the ritual, traditional ritual. You know, we, we knew how our fathers used to, used to behave. I'm telling you, our fathers used to. I pedo. They get into our they get into our homes. Get into our homes. Utajua. Because because when they are king here to go helter skelter, everybody leaves the sitting room. Did you grow up? Did you guys grow up in that generation? He shows up, you know, you know, he just shows up. Everybody is helter skelter anyway. Everybody in the house is now. You have to clean up a little bit here and there so that Musimu Kasirishe. Musimu Kasirishe. Because you you can make him you can make him get annoyed. He sits down. He knows everything is automatic. Eh, chai meletua, nini meletua. Maja kuoga nini. You know. These guys were spoiled. Huh? Can you imagine? But <laughs> well, let me tell you, the way I relate with my wife and the kids, I don't have rituals. In fact, it's so hard for my wife to master rituals because she would like to make tea, but uh, I just, I'm just home. Let me enjoy you guys. I'm home. My kids are not running health or skeleton. You know? I've, I've, I've developed a, 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 new, a new strategy in my house where I bless my children for doing nothing. I bless them. They can tell you, I bless them without doing anything. I tell my wife, I tell my wife that uh, and I've done it several times. I just bless her. So what did I do? I just blessed you. Take 200 shillings, add to you the amount of money I gave you. You did nothing, so I'm blessing you. You don't deserve a hug, I give you a hug. And my hugs, they know. My hug take, take a few minutes. Uh, they take a few minutes. I take a few minutes. 
not because they've done anything good, but they know they have to submit to that to that love because I'm changing I'm changing I don't need them I want them huh? I want them out of ritual into creation I'm finding hard to really wind up this message a lot of things are coming up but my emphasis today is it is for us to have a close relationship with God a very strong relationship with God and to adapt the mind of God the way he looks especially the way he looks at relationships the spouses the people around you the the people in the company or the people in your life the the children the your wife especially change the way you look at them hug them when they're not they said they decided to, uh, is it two days ago they said uh, I said it by my wife uh, a t-shirt I told that that's my t-shirt you wear it it's mine I want to see you in it it is mine I'll be happy to see you in it you understand so you carry a little gift talk to them the way they the way they look at you they, 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 you they begin to change the way they look at you hi we bad lika we kuaga you been lemon throughout most of the time you i me kuwa ndimu sana muda mrefu sana lakini all the things they are going to say is that hey you've really changed you've really changed just be nice just be nice just bless them Look at them and smile and just say I'm in the creation mode. The way God looks at you is the same way I look at you. Get into the creation mode. Usi kwe mtu ritualistic yani ti you know when we when we I'm with the men the men talk. The men talk. The men talk. But uh, that's a topic for another day. <laughs> Can we all stand